Segment 9 for the Breckenridge Design Project is the Master Bath. To begin with, we'll dimension and create the room materials, place the cabinet vanity and layout, move on and design the shower and tub platforms, complete our wall elevations, and then look at the final plan layout. You can see the rendering of the design that we have that we're going to proceed with, and then finally, a copy of my layout page for the construction documents. Let's go into the program and take a look at how to lay out this master bath. In 3D you can see the space for the bathroom, the shower, and the water closet. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to select the material eyedropper and I'm going to pick up the tile off of the floor and apply that to a single wall in component mode. If I choose my scoping for room mode down here in the lower left hand section of your menu and apply it to the room it will then apply it to all walls with the exception of the glass wall since it's simply replacing like material. If I apply it in room mode into the bathroom it's going to replace the tan walls with that tile. Next I'm going to select the room and I'm going to apply a wall covering and I'm going to browse into the plan library and I know the material that I want to use is from Dal Tile I'm going to search for that and once I find that tile select OK and then I'm going to set the dimensions of that with a 24 inch height and then the floor to bottom I'll set it 36 inches. Select OK and return back to the room you can see that that material has been applied. As I switch over to the 2D plan view I'm going to select the room in the lower left hand section of the menu I'm going to use the NKBA automatic dimensions and I'm going to just move around here and clean these up. To begin with, I'm going to select the dimension out of the water closet and pull that back and delete the other dimension. I don't really care about that. may also pull this dimension up and then just kind of slide over to this side where the shower is. Maybe pull these dimensions back so they're out of the way. And again, one more time, I'll pull this dimension back for the shower. And I may also come in here zoom in and place a secondary dimension using the diamond on the inside of that wall and then I'll pull back my 3 8 inch and for this dimension I'm just going to move this one so it's wall to wall and for the most part I have the dimensions cleaned up as I like them. Next I'm going to place the cabinet vanities in the bathroom. Inside my library I've created a folder again for this project called Breckenridge. One of the folders, subfolders underneath there is furniture and you can see a preview of that vanity that I have and I'm going to select that vanity, come over here and place that in the 2D view. And if you're interested in how this vanity was created, I've gone through the steps in another design called the Parabola Bath to show you how to create the custom countertop, dish it out, add in the slat shelving and you can actually find the steps for that underneath this project video on our website. It's under the samples gallery. It's called the Parabola Bath. You can watch the video segment on exactly the steps that I did that. I then saved that cabinet into my library and then I just simply painted it a different color. The next item I'm going to place is a vanity mirror light. Simply grab that and I'm going to place that over in here. I'm going to place it outside to begin with. Zoom in and then I'm just going to slide it against the wall centered above that sink and then take a camera view of this. We'll just click and drag in that direction and you can now see the vanity and the mirror in 3D. Now for this mirror I want to show you a couple of things. Let's take a look. In my ray trace view you'll notice that my mirror actually has a nice glow to it. And What I've done is I've actually created this mirror using polyline solids. I painted the main component of it mirror and then for the two side lights I used a translucent material and then used a light source behind it. Let me deconstruct this mirror. It's right now it's an architectural block. I'm going to select it, unblock it, and then if you look at the two individual components, this center component as I mentioned is just a polyline solid. You can find that tool right up here in the upper menu. And then the two side lights here Again, polyline solid, and if you look at the properties, let me open this up, you can see that it's 5 8 inch thick, and the materials I just used a white. Let me close this, and using the material adjust definition, you can then select that material, and this is kind of where the information that makes this pop. Notice um, some of my settings that I used here, and then I set a transparency so that you can slightly see through that when it renders. And you can actually come over here 
choose the way that it's going to ray trace and you can show that in the ray trace view. I'll go ahead and select that. That does take a few minutes to generate. Notice my ray trace configuration. You can choose the type of ray trace. I usually use a few different ones. If you download the sample plan you'll be able to get access to those. I usually have a lower quality at 400 pixels. 1200 takes quite a bit more time and I also do an outdoor one. But switching this camera style over to ray trace allows you to preview the property settings that you can choose here and also notice there are a number of predefined materials that you can choose and then each one of those has different settings that you can apply with. So in my materials for that mirror I've set these properties. Let me go ahead and switch this back to a standard view and then close this. One more thing that I've done to this mirror is I've actually used some light sources in behind here. In my ray trace view you can actually see these if you look near my mouse, one at a higher level and one at a lower level. Switch back to the floor plan view and to place those light sources the first thing is I have a layer set specifically for light sources because I don't want to see those in my kitchen and bath floor plan. And zoom in a little bit you can still see that mirror and underneath the 3D settings you'll find lighting. There's a add lights tool here and I'm going to go ahead and select that. To begin with I'm just going to kind of click and place right in this area right here. Once that's placed let's go ahead and open that object up. Inside this dialog there's a few settings that you can use. One is point light, spotlight, parallel light. In our help file there's a good definition of each of these. I'm going to use a point light and I'm going to change the intensity. I want it to be very small. Out of this drop down list I'm going to choose custom. In this dialog I'm going to actually set the intensity down to 3%. I found that if you use some number below 3% it actually doesn't really show up. Select OK for 3%. If you want to change the color if you're looking to add a color to that then you can choose that color. Set that in your information for the color. Soft shadows for ray tracing. I'm going to use a diameter of 2%. Go ahead and accept the rest of those defaults. One other thing is I'm going to set the elevation for this. I'm actually going to set it at 52 inches and that will be the lower light. And Once that's finished I'm going to now use the copy in place tool. Open up that light, accept everything else and just change the elevation up 20 inches. Select OK. Zoom out a little bit here. I'm going to draw a marquee around both of these lights. Notice in the lower left hand menu it says two objects selected. I'm going to use the copy tool and I'm just going to slide both of those lights over in front of the other side light. Now when I go back over to the camera view my scene is actually going to get darker because when I don't have any lights or any light sources there's an automatic light source generated that makes the room brighter. The scene would also be a lot brighter in this view if I had my recessed lighting and I have none right now. But for the purpose of the video I'm just going to move back into the floor plan view. I'm going to select these lights and I'm simply going to remove them. And if you go back over to the 3D view once I've removed those lights again the scene gets a lot brighter because the program is generating automatic light source. I want to take this mirror in this vanity and I want to replicate it onto the other side of the room. In the 3D view I'm going to select both of those objects, use the copy and reflect about in the lower left hand menu, select the window and that will then copy that around. One of the things you're going to notice right now in my render view I'm not seeing any reflections in my mirror. I've actually turned that off in my preferences since I have a large model and it seems to be a little bit faster but if I turn that back on reflections in mirrors underneath the render panel you can now see as I rotate around the effects of that mirror and you can see the uh, vanity on the other side and again if you go into the floor plan view you can see that we position that vanity opposite exactly where we wanted it in comparison to the other side. I may have done this in floor plan view if I wanted to also copy the light sources that we drew earlier and then reflected it around the window and placed all of those objects in the same place. Next I'm going to choose the wall elevation camera. Create a wall elevation through this vanity. When the wall elevation comes up notice my door is cracked. If I select that door there's an option you can choose to have it open or closed. I actually had it open for my render and ray trace views. I may close that in my elevation view. Next the tile for the backsplash. Let's use our adjust materials. Click on that backsplash. We can make a few changes on the way this tile looks. As I make my way down the dialog the material color is fine. The lines 
I don't like the way that it's so dark. I'm going to select that black color. And using my eyedropper here, I'm just going to pick up the material off of the main tile color, and then I'm going to make that a lighter color. Slide that up. You get the preview. I'm going to change the material type to a brick. I'm going to set the height to 1 inch, and then I'm going to change the length to 12. Define the depth and the mortar width. Those are fine. On my texture, this is where you get it in your 3D view. These look OK. Select OK and close that. OK, so now let's zoom out and take a look at our dimensioning. I always start my dimensioning typically with the automatic NKBA dimensions. I'm going to select that and then I'm just going to move around and clean up the design. Let's kind of start down here in the lower section. And to begin with, I'm going to pull off some of these dimensions. I'm just going to select the diamond, pull, pull off those dimensions as I need to. You'll notice that it picked up the mirror. I'm just going to simply go around and kind of clean these items up. Once I have that section cleaned up, I'll move around. Let's go ahead and select the extension line for the center line. I like to usually pull those up into the object itself. You want to select the dimension here, zoom in, so that the center line is going through the number. That's always a nice thing to do. Off to the right over here, notice it didn't pick up my wall covering. Now I'm going to use the W on the keyboard. Just kind of draw a line in here. You could also use CAD point. I'll just draw another line in here. I usually have my crosshairs on when I'm not doing a video makes it easier to do that select the diamond let's pull that off we set that to be 24 inches then also we'd set that to be 36 inches off the floor so I'm just going to select both of these lines and select this it was a little bit off when I drew that bottom line set it to be 36 inches it looks like I moved that line up a little bit too far so I'm just going to set that back to 24 the other thing is it didn't draw in the extension line at the bottom. Again, I'm just going to use my line on the keyboard and draw that extension line in here. I'm just going to do the same thing up here on the top. Again, this is usually a lot easier than drawing your dimensions by hand. And when you have your crosshairs on, it makes it easy to set that up. Select this dimension if you like that. On the mirrors, we'll go ahead and leave that OK. And off to this dimension here. And let's see what else. Maybe the couple of dimensions on the cabinet down here. We'll go ahead and pull those off the shelf. And then I'll fill my screen pressing F6 on the keyboard. You can see the, the dimensions for that wall. I'm going to go back into the plan view. And I'm going to rename this camera. I'm going to go ahead and call it Bath Wall 2. And in the plan display, I'm going to give it an M2. I'm going to remove the automatic size and the automatic text. The automatic text will fill that in if you send it out to a layout sheet and it has the information in the layout sheet. My callout size, I'm going to set that to be 14. Select OK. You'll see the camera update. I'm going to slide that over so that it's on the center of that vanity. Again, I can kind of move these around. When I go back to the camera and close it, save the camera, you'll notice that it then fills in. It changes shade when that camera is still open and when you close it, it'll fill the shade in. The next steps in the master bath are to look at the shower and the tub platform. In my ray trace rendering, you can see the elements. And I'm going to begin with the tub. The lower section of the tub is a polyline solid with a different material. The deck, also a polyline solid with a half inch overlap. And then I'm using an overflow tub. Back into the program, I'm going to open up my library. I've saved a folder called Breckenridge. I have a subfolder for appliances and fixtures. I have my favorite overflow tub. I'm going to come over here and click and place that tub in this area. I'm going to rotate this around since the back of it is on the bottom of the screen now. With your temporary dimensions on, you can then position that tub using those dimensions. You simply click on that, turn those back off. If you open up the tub, you can get the dimensions of it. It's always a good idea to look at the specs from the manufacturer's website. And this height is 22.5, and that's to the upper rim. So I'm actually going to need to take a cross section and figure out where I want that tub platform to come in. And I've already written that dimension down. Using the polyline solid tool, I'm going to come in, snap on the corner of the wall, and drag out my dimension. And I'm just to the inside of that door and inside of the shower wall. That's going to extend in there and create my bench. Let's go ahead and select this, open it up, and set the dimensions. On the general panel, I'm going to set the thickness of this to, I've determined 22 and 7 eighths. And then I'm going to also use that same dimension here for the Florida top setting. Let's go ahead and set that to be 22 and 7 eighths as well. That'll set the Florida bottom at zero. And then the next step is to come in. If you go back to the camera view, 
you can see the polyline solid and the tub. Back in the floor plan view, what we need to do, I'm going to use the polyline solid tool and actually draw around that tub and mark it as a hole. So again, I'll just use that tool, come around, snap onto the bathtub. If you open it up, there's an option here to mark it as a hole in the solid. And we'll toggle back over to the 3D view. And you can see that it's now been cut out. I'm going to choose that polyline solid. And I'm going to use the copy in place tool down in the lower section of your menu. Press copy in place. Take the thickness and make it a half inch. And then I'm going to add floor to top at a half inch. So I'm just going to put in plus 0.5, then change the thickness to a half inch. While the object is still selected, I'm going to pull that out a half inch. Back over in the 3D view, I'm now going to use a material painter. Use the eyedropper, pick up the material for the tub platform off of the wall, apply that to the top deck, use the material eyedropper off of the backsplash. And in this case, notice my tub platform changed everything. That's because my scoping was for room. I'm going to change that back to component and just apply that to the lower section of that tub platform. One more thing with the tub. Notice that my sink actually has water in it. I want to do the same thing for the tub. Over in the floor plan view, I'm going to use that same tool, the polyline solid. I'm just going to come in here and create one more solid right over the top portion of that tub. Select it, press the tab key, and I'm going to set the height of this. In this case, let's go ahead and use something like 23 inches and also the elevation at the top, 23 inches. So I have a big slab and right now it's going to be of concrete. Back in the 3D, I'll use my material eyedropper, pick up the water from the sink, and apply it into the tub concrete. And that way, I've got that reflection that I can get when I ray trace it. As I move on and take a look at the shower, you may have noticed during my rendering when we began and we put a wall covering in the room, that wall covering actually came onto the glass, and it's a little, little bit more recognizable in the overhead view. In reality, if you have a glass wall, wall covering is not the best way to do it. So I'm going to come back in here, just delete that, and the correct way to do it is to do this in the wall elevation view. And you have to draw a backsplash for each wall. If we go back in and open up this camera, I still have the dimensions because we use lines for that backsplash. I'm going to come in here and use our custom backsplash tool and just come in and create that backsplash. Once that backsplash is placed, I'm going to open it up and I'm going to check that it cuts the finish so that it's flush with the other material. And then under the edit, I'm going to change from the default material back to the original material. That's still in the plan. So using the plans folder material and then apply it and select OK. If you move a door around, then it will automatically cut that backsplash out. Let me just undo that. And I'm just going to skip ahead and place the remaining backsplashes on the other walls. Back in the 3D mode, I'm going to use the material eyedropper, select the color off of the wall, and apply that into the shower. I am in room mode, so it's going to click and select both of those walls. And now I want to create vertical backsplashes inside of this. And I'm going to use a wall elevation to accomplish it. In the render view, you can see what I'm going to do. I'm just going to go in and create a wall elevation. I'll begin against the back wall using the wall elevation tool. Just slide that through the wall and choose the custom backsplash tool we used earlier. Just come in and create that backsplash. Kind of position it something like eight inches off of the shower bench. Use the fourplex to move it. And then I'll also stretch it back up to the top of the wall. I'm going to open up that backsplash just like we did before. Cut the finish change of materials. And since that material is in our plan, we'll choose that plan material and close that. I'm going to make a copy of that using the copy tool. Slide over the copy. As I'm sliding that over, I'm just going to press the tab key, enter in two foot eight, select OK. And now those two backsplashes are complete. And I'll go ahead and do that same thing on the other wall. Now that I have both of those backsplashes placed in a shower, I'm going to move over to the wall elevation, open up the library, Again, in my project file, I'm going to find the shower head, the valve, and also a handrail and place these items over here on the wall elevation. These are all items that you can simply place out of the library in the core bonus library items. I've conveniently located them in folder for myself. I've centered that handrail on the room, selected the valve, and I'm going to center that on the shower head itself. With those items in position, I'm now going to use the automatic wall elevation place the dimensions. And I'm going to do a little bit of cleanup in here. 
First of all, I'm going to select the valve and the shower head, set that dimension to be 18 inches. While they're still selected, I'm going to use the copy and reflect about the room and position those on the other side of the room. For the vertical dimensions, I'm going to change my annotation set to the appliance and center lines, change my dimension tool to the center line, and now I'm going to run my dimension down through these items, pick them up. Notice it's also picking up the subfloor. We'll clean that up. I'm just going to pull that off to the side, zoom in here, select the dimension. I'm going to pull the dimension off for the subfloor. And with the handrail selected, I'm going to set that dimension to be 38. And then I want the valve to be six inches above the handrail. Select it, enter in six inches. For the shower head, I want that one to be 36 inches above the valve. So enter that number in, and then I'll zoom in towards the ceiling and remove that final dimension off item here. Now notice when I ran my dimensions, in some cases, the automatic dimension didn't place the extension line. I'm just going to use the line tool, pressing W on the keyboard, and come in here and draw out that line. And I'll finish cleaning up any of the other lines that didn't complete in here. Once I have those dimensions cleaned up, a little bit of busy work here. I'm actually, I'll just pull that down so that it's even. Pull this one down as well. Maybe just as easy just to select both of these items, delete them. Now that these are correctly dimensioned, I'm actually just going to copy them and reflect them about the room and not have to worry about having it be exact. I'll just let the program do the work for me. Now the next item I want to add is a couple of shelves in the corner. I'm going to go back into the plan view and draw those in. In my plan view to create those shelves inside the shower, I'm going to use a polyline solid tool and I'm just going to come in here and draw out the shape of that solid and then I'll just pull it over here just a little bit. With this diamond selected on the corner, I'm just going to pull that over and snap that into place and then open up that object and I'm going to set the thickness at 1. The elevation at, I'm going to set that up to be 36. And then for the fill style, I like to do an angled hatch so I can see these. I'm going to choose the color and then I'm also going to set the background to be transparent so I can see through the floor and the handrail in this case. And that is shelf number one. I'm going to use the copy in place. While the item is still selected, I'm going to open it up and I'm going to change the elevation in this case to be 50 inches. And now I should have two shelves when I go back into the 3D view. Using the eyedropper tool, I'll come in and choose the material off of the backsplash and apply it to both of these shelves in here. While in this 3D view, let's tilt our camera here just a little bit. I'm going to go into the library and I'm going to use a Stratostone material for the flooring. I'm going to name of that product and I'm going to grab it out of the library and then point and click on the floor. One more element for the shower is to put a strip drain in this area and I'm going to just do that in the plan view. Back over in my library, we'll cancel out the search, go back to my appliances and fixtures folder and grab the strip drain and I'm just going to click and place that strip drain. You can see that I have all of the components in place for the shower. Next for the bath, I'm going to put in some inset tiles for grip outside of the shower, the bath, and then across the main floor. Inside of the program, you'll find a tool underneath the build floor called Floor Material Region. And I'm going to select that tool and come in here, create a area right through these two tiles, select that, and inside of the information, just like the backsplash, we can cut the finish. And I'm going to change the thickness of this. Let me delete this extra layer. The thickness of our floor is 7 8 I'm going to use the exact same thickness. And then once I've got that set, I'm going to use the material eyedropper off of the stone in the shower and apply it onto that element. In the plan view, I'm going to change the fill of that object before I do a multiple copy across the floor. On the fill style, I'm going to choose custom. And on the pattern file, I'm going to use the same that we did in the kitchen backsplash. I'm going to choose the stone. And then inside of that, I'm going to come down and choose 197. The spacing, I'll set at 1. And then on the color, I'm going to use a lighter color for that and then set the transparency rate actually pretty high at 75% and make sure that it's transparent. And finally on the line style, choose the color for the line style. I'm going to use a very light color for that and then we'll close that and I'm going to use a multiple copy on that object. Cross there, 
and I'll just use the multiple copy, set the interval at 30 inches, and then slide a copy of those across the floor. And then back in 3D, you can see our inset tiles. You can use this tool for areas like a entry for coming off the front door rather than maybe a room divide and changing the wall material. Let me use this same tool here and I'm just going to actually copy that, slide this over in front of the shower. Sometimes easier to do some of these things in plan view. And then we'll just pull that about to that grout line. And then I'll use the copy tool. We'll do the same thing for the bathtub. And actually, I think I'll slide that inside the grout line here. And then I'll create a copy of that, slide it in front of the bathtub, and maybe make it a little bit longer. Next, I'm going to add a few accessories into the plan. I'm going to actually do that from floor plan. Open up the library. I've saved some bath accessories. I'll just slide off to the side over here. Some of these blocks, sometimes they're larger. Go ahead and turn on that layer. And I place those out off to the side. Just come over here and position that in this area. And then back over to the 3D view. You can see the effect. These are, again, things that I've added from the 3D library into my program. And I'll grab these flowers. These are the same flowers that I placed in the kitchen, but I've changed the color of it. Let's just go ahead and grab that in the 2D view. And then I'll also grab the towel holder, place that off to this side. Grab that plant, use the copy and reflect about. So we have one on the other range back into the 3D view. And now you can see those accessories. It's a great way to help you visualize the design, make it look great. I've rendered this with both the accessories and without the accessories. So here's a bare bones rendering, no inlay tiles, no accessories. The tile does not go up all the way on the wall, nor is it on all of the walls. And then here's the version of it with all of the accessories, the ray trace with it. Really makes a difference in being able to sell the job. Once you work your way around the library and can add these items and create your own folders of your favorites, it's easy to then place those. From the overhead view, you'll notice that my closet actually has nothing in there. And just like I block the accessories, you can actually block an entire room, which is what I've done in my library over here. And I've saved a master closet. I'm just going to switch over to the plan view and place them over here and click and place in the middle of the room. Place that object. Sometimes you have to position those off to the side and then move them into space. Back over to the 3D view, you can now see the closet and let me just rotate around here a little bit and I'll pull my camera down and now you can see how quickly it was to place that closet. It's a great way a lot of times you may use the same configurations for your designs. This is a great way to just simply reuse some of these elements. If you happen to watch the kitchen segment in video number eight I created this floor detail for the plan view to represent the flooring material. I'm going to do the same thing in the bath. I'm just going to come in here, use a CAD box. Inside of the box, I'm going to choose a fill style of brick. And then we'll set the spacing of that to something like 10. Make sure that it's transparent. And then I'm going to lighten the color up quite a bit. For the line, I'm going to choose that to be blank. So I need to scroll down here a little bit, find a blank line. That should be it. That will give us our fill style. And I can actually use that fill style, match it onto the tub using the match object properties. I'll just click that, come over here, and fill that onto the tub. And now if you zoom out, you can see that we have that fill style. With a little bit of work in here, we can clean that up, pull this around. Maybe use the break tool. And I'll just pull this up. That may be over the top of the wall or the uh, floor materials. I'll just take the transparency off of those. And now those inset tiles are over the top of the flooring material. Now in the last segment of the video, we're going to take a look at the final plan and creating the layout sheet. What I've done in my layout sheet is I've created a 24 by 36. I've combined it with renderings wall elevations, floor plan, and the fixture schedule, and then a few materials that I've used. I have a blank layout open. It's 24 by 36. It has information in there with my logo, my company name. Those are images you can drag in there. And then on the title block, let's just go ahead and open that up. And I'm just going to customize that with the master bath plan. And over in floor plan, we have three different elevations to send out. I've already opened those cameras up. Just choose to send that out to the layout. I'm going to send that at a half inch and then there's two options and to send it as a live view which I'm going to do and update on demand. Always update is a little bit resource intensive. Plot lines will give you black and white and then you can do the color fill. Let's go ahead and send it out to the layout and position it. Once that's on the layout sheet, I'm just going to grab that and pull it down into the corner. I'm going to go back over to the elevation, the sink wall and do the exact same thing. Send a layout 
half inch scale, and live view update on demand. And then we'll position that as well, and I'll just pull that down. And I'll skip ahead and send the last wall elevation out using the same attribute. Now that those are on there, I'm going to use my rich text tool and click and place some text here. And I've just pasted that off of my clipboard. I've used quarter inch with an underline for shower elevation. Set the scale over here and then I'll just pull that down over here and then I'm going to create a call out using the call out. And I'll just click and place that call out and in this case we'll give it a value of M3 and we'll just check the textile to make sure that it's a quarter inch textile. I'm going to make sure that I'm using the same, set that to be quarter inch and then once that's in place, let me actually give that some arrows. Let's go ahead and on the attributes, we'll make that a large arrow filled and we'll just put number one on it and then we'll position that into place. And then I'll repeat that process for the text marker and call out for the other elevations. Next thing I'm going to do is browse out to my images and pull in a rendering. And from my second monitor, I'm just going to pull that image over and drop that into the plan. I'll double click on it and then I'm going to set the dimension of that down to 12. Then we'll pull that up into the upper right hand corner and then I'm just going to rescale that a little bit. Next I'm going to return to the floor plan view and I want to send the floor plan out. Before I do that I want to do a couple things. One, I'm going to place a call out and some notes. So I'm just going to come over here and place a note about, let's put a number one in here and then on the attributes make sure that there are no arrows. And then finally on the textile I'm going to actually set the height of that to be four inches. And I'm going to slide that number one over here onto the vanity and then I'm going to put some notes over here. I'm going to use, typically I'd use my rich text notes that you would find in here and place it. But what I've done is place those in my library. I'm just going to open that up, pull the notes out of my library that I use typically, and then I'll place those off to the side over here. And this is something you can also do in the layout sheet rather than placing it in the floor plan view, kind of just a preference item. Once I've got that set, I'll send that out to the layout. Again, I'm going to send that out as a half inch and then we'll position it on the layout sheet. And then I'm just going to slide that up and into the corner. You may find you need to adjust the viewport. You can just click on these handles and expand and contract that as you need to. Next for the layout, I'm going to place the fixture schedule in the lower left hand section of the screen back into the floor plan view. I like to do these through a CAD detail and I'm just going to come in here and open up that fixture schedule that I've already created. Really the way you create these are through the schedules, fixture, and then you can create that. If you open up one of these schedules here, you can see that I've given it a name. I've isolated it actually to the shower room. There's a water closet and there's also a bathroom. I've done three of those. Then the columns that I'm including are the 3D symbol, quantity, and description that you can see over here. And I usually place these in a CAD detail versus the floor plan view just to kind of keep that clean. Now I can send this out to my layout sheet. And I'm going to actually, let's try um, something like 3 16 to begin with to make sure it's not too large. We'll send out the current screen. That way the viewport's not overly large. I'll just grab that and pull it down. And you'll see my viewport's actually pretty large. So let's just pull that in and then slide this over. Next on my layout, you can see that I've used some materials in here. I've gone out to the website. These are Dell Tile components. And I've gone out and got, gathered those images. And also, if you zoom in a little bit, I've gotten the specs and put a link to those specs for installation right on the layout sheet. So on my second monitor, I've downloaded those images right off of the Dell Tile website. Place that in here. Those come in quite large. I'm just going to open it up and then we'll set that to a small value and see if that's going to work okay. Slide that down. I'll paste in the other two images just like that and then resize them. Then using Rich Text Tool, I'll come in and put a description with that and I'm just going to come in here. I'm going to pull that off of my clipboard and again I've used the spec off of their website for installation and then we'll just position that and I'll add the other two text objects as well. Now the final thing for the layout, I didn't put a cabinet schedule because those are custom vanities and again I'm going to come over to my second monitor, drag in that image of that vanity and then resize that. Again I'm just going to pick in a number in here that I think might work and I'll just need to resize that down and then I'll probably put the specs below this with the information about that. I also pasted in a rendering of the closet. Now one thing that I like to do with the images that I paste in here, if you open this up, one of the things that I always do is I'll say save in plan and then if it happens to be a JPEG, I'll make sure the quality is at 100%. That way if you're 
uh, sending this between computers, it won't show up as a blank spot in your construction drawing. Here's my finalized layout for the bath. This is something you can download from the website in the sample plan when it's posted up there under the samples gallery and you can take a look and follow along. This wraps up the section of the master bath. We've gone through, created our dimensions for our room, set our room materials, placed the vanity cabinets, created our shower and tub platforms, the wall elevations, and then our last segment here in creating our plan layout and construction drawings.